Medical misinformation is everywhere. Dr. Mitch is here for straight talk and to give you the truth. Hi everybody, I thought I'd do a video about estrogen and progesterone. There's a lot of confusion. I find patients are confused too because they'll often say, hey, my progesterone's really low or my estrogen's really low. How could I have estrogen positive breast cancer? Well, let's get some of the characteristics in place first. Progesterone decreases cell proliferation. Estrogen, on the other hand, increases it. If you want to increase proliferation, if you want things to grow, then use estrogen. And if you want things to have not so much proliferation or balance it, then it would be progesterone. Should be easy. Progesterone levels at the time of breast cancer at surgery, by the way, basically affect the survival rates. The higher the progesterone, the longer the survival. Progesterone levels and estrogen should be monitored because estrogen in its local area is a cause or is related to growth in cancer. The most interesting finding is they found what happened to cell proliferation during a 13-day test. They found that when they look at proliferating cell nuclear antigen, PCNA, which seems to be the most accurate measurement, they found that when they did measure, and they measured on a chart, they found that at the 13 days of measurement that there was no question that progesterone did decrease the growth pattern and also the proliferation where estrogen did not. Topical progesterone, they did in this particular study, meaning a cream, actually reduced cell proliferation by 410%. Should make you think clinically how important it is and prior to surgery, how important progesterone, especially in breast cancer surgery, this could be. Topical estrogen increased the proliferation by 223%, 410 reduced in progesterone, 223 increased by estrogen. So when it was combined, it still helped and reduced cell proliferation by about 16%. And it did help protect the recurrence also of metastasis. And see, my little girl Daisy also agreed with that at the same time. In 1976, there was a Dr. Moore who started a test at two major hospitals, and this was in England, in London, um, that did breast surgery. And he requested every time they had a breast surgery, they take a, a blood test and save it so they could test the progesterone level at the time of surgery. He also tested, by the way, of course, testosterone, progesterone, and estrogen. And he found that progesterone level at the time of surgery was correlated with a much better survival, which makes sense for us as clinicians to consider using progesterone prior to breast cancer surgery, if that's the case. The survival record was reviewed, by the way, 18 years after the breast cancer surgery in no positive patients, and it means that the cancer had already spread and was metastasizing, having lymph nodes that were abnormal. This was written up in the British Journal of Cancer in 1996. The title of the article was Serum Progesterone and Prognosis in Operable Breast Cancer. This is over 100% improvement they found just by having adequate progesterone levels of surgery. Now we belabor this a little bit to make it clear that progesterone makes sense and that should be part of the treatment. And you should be aware that estrogen is utilized locally in many tumors, such as colon and melanoma and other tumors. It's not just circulating estrogen that's the problem, it's the receptors or the cancer using it for it to grow. We find that estrogens even play a role in the etiology of human breast and prostate cancer. What's the takeaway of all this? Well, it's simple. The progesterone should always be used in the case of using estrogen for the most part because it calms down the, prolifer the proliferative nature of the estrogen. 
And when someone says, oh, there's no more uterus, that's not necessarily true because it has cardiovascular and other areas where proliferation could occur. Think progesterone, quiet things down, think of estrogen to speed things up and make things grow. And of course, test it before, after surgery, and of course, pretty much in all women, at least once a year. I'm Dr. Mitch Gen. For more information, go to drmitchgen.com. That's D-R-M-I-T-C-H-G-H-E-N.com. I thank you so much for always watching.